What's up everybody? My name is Reggie and welcome to my first ever board game video on the channel. Uh, I was inspired by Ruel Gaviola who's doing his own alphabet challenge and I thought I would pick my favorite game that starts with each letter of the alphabet and today we're going to go from A through J. So you can pause the video if you want and follow along and write your own answers down and put in the comments why your list is better than mine. And before we begin, I want to also tag a few other creators to encourage them to make some videos as well. Some people I've worked with or I've been watching uh, for a long time. So those people are Jamie and Jeff over at Foster the Meeple, uh, Alicia and Dwayne over at Blackboard Gaming and Jazz at the Lobby of Hobbies. Hope to see your list soon. So without any further delay, if you recall your kindergarten uh, class, we're gonna start with the letter A. So my choice for the letter A is Arc Nova. This is a game by Matthias Wig, and it kind of took the board game community by storm and shot up the board game geek rankings and really was the hotness for a very long time. And I do really enjoy this game and really have to preface that I am a sucker for animal and nature themes and I love them. It's one of my favorite themes in all of board games. Um, but it is a game where you're managing your zoo and there's two different primary scoring tracks. One which is the appeal of your zoo and one is your conservation efforts. And how you're doing that is by building an actual zoo with a little bit of tile placement and, the, and really you're doing a lot of action selection. So there are five cards that you get to choose from that are your actions, and they are more powerful or more effective based on where they are on the numbers between one through five. And when you use an action, it goes down to five and all of your other ones slide up. So the real strategy of the game is when to use an action um, you know, that's not as efficient and when to wait for an action to get it to that five spot and get the maximum value out of it. And I just loved that choice. And the turns are actually pretty snappy. Um, I played a three player ver uh, game for about two hours with some of my best buds and it was a great time and I really enjoyed Arc Nova. For the letter B, I have uh, had a difficult time. There's a lot of games I love that start with letter B. Um, some honorable mentions would be Botnik, Blue Lagoon, Bonanza. I'm sure you guys have a lot um, that you might mention as well in the comments, but uh, I decided to go with Bang the Dice Game. Now this has a special place in my heart because it really is my gateway game into the hobby of modern board gaming um, and was really the only game me and my friends played for the last like seven or eight years um, consistently before I started really building out this collection over here. So um, Bang the Dice Game is a game by Michael Palm and Lucas Zack, small, um, small box game that's got a Wild West theme, and you are given a role, as, a, as in Sheriff or Renegade or Outlaw, and you're also giving a character with a little bit of a power that might help you manipulate the dice or be immune to hazards or do more damage or something like that. And it was just a game that really opened my eyes to what board games can be. Now looking back, obviously it's actually a pretty straightforward game, but I had never played a board game in my childhood where you actually had variable player powers and I had something and I could do an action that no one else in the um, game could do where also have hidden roles and I don't know who's who's on my team as an outlaw or who's on my team as a deputy um, and that makes the game so exciting. It still comes out at my board game nights. Um, I talked about this a little bit in depth, very similar to now um, in the most recent OFPG Voices video. So if you don't follow our family plays games, go check them out. Um, it is one of my special games as a gateway game. So that's letter B. And for C, um, I chose the game Calico, another game that I actually don't own. Um, one of my close friends has it and we uh, have played it many times. I'm very excited to play the digital version, which is supposed to come out this year. Uh, I think that's going to be a very good implementation uh, made by the same company that makes Wingspan Monster Couch. So I'm excited about that. So Calico is a puzzly game where you are attracting cats and earning buttons um, by using these tiles that have multiple different colors and patterns. I like to call this game, you know, a Sudoku-like, and I think the appeal of it is you have a restricted puzzle that you have to figure out how to 
use what you're given to make a more efficient scoring puzzle than your opponents. And I love that about it. The other game that I would say is similar to that would be like a Sagrada, um, where you have the restricted puzzle and is more Sudoku-like, as opposed to something like a Cascadia, where you can kind of sprawl in any direction that you want. So um, Calico has a lot of replayability, really brain burny and makes you think um, when you're playing it. And, and that is why I love Calico. And I am strictly a dog person. I'm not even a cat person at all. And I still love Calico to this day. So that's letter C. So for the letter D, I had a little bit of a tough time because there's a lot of games that start with the word dice, as in Dice Miner or Dice Throne, and I am rolling Reggie. Um, but I actually settled on the number one party game according to BGG, and that is Decrypto. Now, it's designed by someone with a French last name, and I took Spanish, so give me a break here, but it is Thomas Dejeuner L'Esperance. And um, this is really what I like to call like advanced code names. And instead of having to guess what your words are, you actually know your team's four words, one, two, three, and four, and you'll be drawing a code that might be two, three, one, or it might be four, two, three. And you have to convey to your team with three words, but the other team is listening the whole time and they're writing down what clues you give to your team. So the goal of the game is, and the trick of it really, is that you are trying to um, you're trying to convey what your numbers are to your teammates without it being too obvious to the other team. And so you win if you get two intercept tokens by, um, you know, getting it right from the other team, or if your team doesn't get yours right. If you go too obscure twice, you lose. So great game. I really would recommend it to especially heavier gamers who are trying to find something that's a little light but still has that crunch, um, Decrypto is the answer for you there. And then for the letter E, I went with another nature-themed game, Bird specifically, and that is Enchanted Plumes. Very small box game by Brendan Hansen, and I don't have it on me right now because I always keep it in my backpack um, to go, you know, places with me. It's got a great solo variant um, that I play on my own as well, but beautiful game with beautiful art. The mechanics of Enchanted Plume are kind of solitaire-like in that you are putting your feathers in a row on a top row and going down to one. You can go as far out as you want on that first row, but know that the top row is all negative for you and the numbers are zero to nine. So ideally you'd have zero, one, zero, one, you know, on your top row, and then you get your big numbers like seven, eights, and nines down towards the bottom. Um, and so it's a very peaceful game that I really enjoy. And, and again, like I said, I bring it around with me everywhere. So it was actually a pretty easy um, win for E. I'll honorable mention Everdell, but I've only played that one time. It's right there on my collection as well. So moving on to the letter F, I went with Fantasy Realms, another small box card game. I'm really learning that the games that I love and enjoy are the ones that hit the table a lot. And this is one that's so easy to hit the table. It's really just a deck of cards and there's a score pad, but you could use the app, which makes things a lot easier. Um, it also has maybe the simplest mechanic um, of any game in my collection where it's just you draw one card and you discard one card every turn. That's it. Um, and it's by Bruce Glasgow. It's very elegant. Um, where the strategy comes in is that there are nine different suits and a bunch of different cards. And so then there are dozens and dozens of combos in the game and you end up scoring huge numbers of points. Um, when the game ends, as in 10 cards are in the discard pile, then everybody just shows their hand. You're never playing cards down below or anything. You're just discard, draw, and trying to create the best combo in your hand. You know, for example, there's a cavern card and it gets a bonus 20 points or something when you have the dwarvish infantry. Um, tough word to say there. Uh, but I, I love those type of combos. And what I really enjoy about the game is that it's fun to lose in the fantasy realms. It's because if I get all seven of my cards to have bonuses and combo well, and I have no negative in my hand, um, I'm satisfied. And that is something that not every game can do where you can be satisfied even when you're losing the game for sure. For the letter G, um, I did not pick Gloomhaven or Great Western Trail or any of these big heavy games. I chose a classic, Go Fish. No, I, I actually looked at all my played games and I it is the one letter that I just don't have any plays of a G game. So 
what I decided to do is just tell you about the game on my want to play list that I'm most excited about. And that is Gizmos, and that is by Phil Walker Harding. Shout out to the Brothers Murph, praise be, um, to PWH. But a great designer, I love him. You'll hear about him again very soon. Um, but Gizmos is an engine building game with some beautiful art that really is one of those games where I just know I'm going to like it. I just haven't had a chance to play it. Um, you know, medium, lightweight, uh, Phil Walker Harding game, uh, sign me up. So that that's G, Gizmos. And then... Uh, we're going to do H here, which is Honey Buzz, and that's here on my shelf here. Um, great worker placement game with beautiful production by Paul Solomon. Um, and my favorite piece about it really are the, some of the components. They got beeples, um, bee meeples. You can't beat that. And they also have these really gooey honey nectar, you know, um, just such great tactile pieces. Um, that's something for board gamers for sure. We love our, our chonky pieces and we love our like squishy pieces. So uh, that's Honey Buzz. It is a worker placement game where you are making a bee economy with these hex tiles and you actually have to enclose a tile to earn its benefits. And, and that is a little bit of a tricky thing. My wife is always better at those type of things than I am. Um, but I think the production, the you know, pretty straightforward mechanics and um, and the theme really make Honey Buzz a great fit for, you know, that next step up if you've been, you know, getting into board games for the last year or so. The letter I was really easy for me. I'm really curious what you all are going to have played in the comments. Uh, I haven't had that many eyes that I've played, but one of my all-time favorites is in there, and that is Emotep. It is just above uh, on the book on the shelf here. You can't see it, um, but it is by Phil Walker Harding. Praise be, um, and it is a great one um, that I've just always loved ever since I played it, and I will try to make as many people play it as possible. It's one of those games where. The mechanics are pretty straightforward. We're all building um, parts of Egypt, a burial chamber, a temple, an obelisk, um, the pyramids. And we just have these really chunky wooden stones. Um, and on your turn, you can either resupply your stones. You have five maximum. Put one on a ship, or you can sail a ship that if it has enough stones on it. And when those ships sail, they get loaded into the five different scoring tracks or the scoring locations, I'm sorry, which are the market, the the pyramid, the temple, all those places I said. And each place scores a little bit differently. So if you're the second slot stone on that boat, you really don't want to go to the pyramid because you're only going to score one point. You'd really prefer to go to the temple because you're going to score one point uh, multiple turns in a row. And there's a flip side to each of those locations. Um, great game to try it on Board Game Arena online as well. Um, but I just love it and I love to bring it out with friends who know it, especially because it can get really mean where you, you know, you load up all these stones on a boat and someone else sails that boat for you um, to a place you don't want to go. And that is uh, why I really got it. I was looking for a game with a little more interaction um, because a lot of my games tend to be that multiplayer solitaire that people call that um, which I do love but Emotep is that one where it's like a little bit of interaction but it's not outright confrontation um, and that that's the best way I could describe it so love Emotep it's a classic I really recommend a lot of people trying that one out and finally for this video um, we're gonna do the letter J and so I chose and again another one I had tough I, I, I wonder if you guys struggled as much as I did figuring these out but I went with just one another great party game and I just I couldn't not pick this game because it is the board game that I have taught to everyone. My mom, grandparents, siblings, coworkers. It is just so straightforward and fun. Um, anybody can learn. I, we played it on my wedding day. Um, so it's a great game. Uh, what you're doing is you're going to get to pick a clue. Um, maybe it's Nutella or something, and you don't get to see that uh, word. You pick, you pick a number on the card, and the word might be Nutella. And then everybody else, up to six other people, will be writing a clue down to help you get the word. We're working together, correct? Um, but, uh, weird thing to say, sorry. But if anybody matches those words that they give you as clues, then they have to erase them. So if they put hazelnut, hazelnut, chocolate, 
creamy and they both did hazelnut, those get crossed off. And all I'm going to see as the guesser is chocolate and creamy. So I might guess mousse or something and get it completely wrong. So um, that's it. Nice little dry erase boards. And um, again, a, a absolute instant classic that I could actually recommend to anyone. So that's just one. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If you wanna see um, parts two and three, please subscribe uh, for those videos that will be coming out really soon. And you could also leave a like and find me on Instagram at rolling.reggie. Also, I totally appreciate any feedback. Like I said, I'm pretty new to the YouTube thing. Um, so I'm really excited to get going with all these videos and meet more of you awesome board gamers like myself. So again, I'm Rolling Reggie, lover of all things games, and hope you have a great day. Gonna clip that out. <laughs>